Without further ado, this is my Fiat 124 Spider of ours. I go by the smart man and in today's video I'm gonna be telling you guys why you should not buy a Fiat 124 Spider of ours and uh, there's there's five reasons why you should not buy this car so stay tuned so if you're at all familiar with the Fiat 124 Spider of Barth this is basically a sister car to the Mazda Miata um, it just has a different heart and a different soul but generally speaking, the platform is the same, but there are five reasons you guys should not buy this car. This is the first reason you should not buy a Fiat 124 Spider. This thing is uh, really tiny, and when you're driving on the highway with huge trucks and big SUVs here in America, well, be sure you're ready to tight grip that steering wheel because sometimes it can be a little nerve wracking, this tiny little car. And speaking of tiny little cars like this Fiat 124 Spider, the second reason you shouldn't buy this car is because it's just not that powerful. This engine is a 1.4 liter inline four, and uh, well, let's just say, uh, I'm glad it's turbocharged. Um, me, I came from another Fiat, I came from a Miata, I came from a smart car, so this is good for me. The third reason you shouldn't buy this car is actually here on the inside of the car, and I'm gonna say that this infotainment system is pretty crappy. This car does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It does have Bluetooth, I will tell you that, uh, but the Bluetooth on this car takes forever to sync with your phones. If I touch my cell phone while it is syncing with the Bluetooth, it's kind of all glitchy and uh, the infotainment system won't actually play the music despite being connected to the phone. It's a bizarre little thing, a uh, little quirk of this car and I've tested this on two phones and uh, maybe it's just my car, <laughs> who knows. So the fourth reason you should not buy a Fiat 124 Spider is because there is an absolute lack of storage. Now, um, some cars obviously have less storage than this car, um, but the big takeaway on this car is there's actually no glove box. It's literally just dashboard, <laughs> which is bizarre to me. Um, I had a Miata in the past, it had a glove box and it had a center storage cubby in the middle between the seats, which this car does have. You don't realize how much you actually put in a glove box until you actually are missing your glove box. So uh, I am glad that it has this center little cubby storage thing, um, but it, it really isn't too large. I mean, I do have some stuff in here, but like for example, this full piece of paper, it barely fits in there. Uh, which a glove box holds lots of papers, it holds the owner's manual, all that stuff. But, storage sake, at least this car does have a trunk. But, the trunk isn't too big, being it's a roadster. Being a roadster, I mean, I'm just complaining about storage space. But, uh, I mean, <laughs> I can't even get in here. <laughs> Alright, actually, okay, I can get in here, look. <laughs> Now, I'm not exactly a small guy. It definitely doesn't have the storage capacity of a small SUV or, or even a small car for that matter. The fifth reason you should not buy this car is because it is extremely rare. Rare meaning they only sold 15,786 of these things here in the United States. And uh, well, being rare, I mean, that just means that parts are gonna be way more expensive on this car uh, when you need them. Now. I want to pivot a little bit because I just told you five reasons why you should not buy the Fiat 124 Spider, but none of these reasons are reasons to not buy it. <laughs> when people do car reviews on Roadsters, why do they always have to bring up storage capacity? It's a Roadster. That being said, who cares about storage capacity because this car is not meant to haul around a washer and a dryer. If you want to haul around a washer and a dryer, you buy a truck or a smart car because I've done that in my smart car. And am I really worried about an infotainment system and a drop top roadster with a great sounding exhaust? I don't think anybody prefers to listen to music than an exhaust note. If you're a car enthusiast, you want to hear the exhaust note. You don't want to hear what's playing on the radio. 
And I mean, power, we can add power, but really there's no reason why you shouldn't buy a 124 Abarth. This car is unique and it's special. Uh, look at this, I mean, come on, come on. Enough, enough being said, I mean, let's just cut the review now. <laughs> This car is cool because it's like a mix between Italian styling and like the Japanese reliability. Like, come on, why did we only sell less than 16,000 of these cars? For example, my Fiat 500, they sold over 200,000 Fiat 500s here in the United States. My smart car is even less rare than this car, being they sold nearly 100,000 smart cars in the United States. 16,000? Come on, come on you guys. I wish that we would have kept this car alive. So this is my favorite angle of the car. So anytime you guys see me talking to a camera, you're probably going to see this angle. Um, I recently added some Abarth badging to the car. So if you haven't zoomed in, it's not a Ferrari badge. It's literally just Abarth badging. So I'm not trying to be an imposter or anything like that, but it does look like a Ferrari badge. So uh, we'll just keep that on the down low. Um, some things I want to do to the car. Well. I definitely want some new wheels. I think that the wheels, uh, they look good. Uh, they're good for now, uh, but whenever I upgrade my rubber on this car, I'm thinking about getting some new wheels. I definitely would like a wing. All right, let's get driving. So this car, <laughs> it's just so much fun. <laughs> um, that's why you should buy this car. I mean, I tried talking you guys out of it, and as always, my videos are an epic fail, but this car handles fantastic. It sounds great once you put an exhaust on it. And uh, overall, this is one of those cars that isn't going to be a burden. Um, for example, like I could take this car out for a fun drive and it will bring me home. It won't break down, right? Whereas a lot of Italian cars get that kind of bad reputation for just being unreliable. Uh, this Man, this car is great. And especially with this, this new exhaust, I'm just loving it. <laughs> Obviously, one of my favorite things about this car is that it has a six-speed manual. And uh, you don't find that in cars too often these days. I love how you can see the hood and it's black and you got the red flinders coming up and this gauge cluster being red. Such a great little car. So, in conclusion, Five reasons you shouldn't buy a Fiat 124 Spider. Well, it turns out those are all reasons to probably buy a Fiat 124 Spider. Fun little package, and uh, like I said previously, I have some great plans with this car. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for more Fiat 124 content. And I still do have the smart car, and actually, we are about we are about to head on a smart car adventure within the next few weeks. So I got some awesome smart car content coming your way. As always, you guys take care.